coming up on this edition of The Solo Show. Or the original one no longer exists, but I guess it's a tribute to Walt. They rebuilt a replica of the replica to Marceline. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's still two barns, but the original one in Marceline is no that. longer. Yeah, so the, I, that's what I had heard is that they made a, a replica of the original replica that Walt made a replica of. This and a whole lot more coming up right now on The Solo Show. And just a reminder, The Solo Show is brought to you by Victor Naraki Realtor, serving Disney and the greater Orlando area with CelebratingFlorida.com and DisneyAtYourDoorstep.com. The future is bright indeed. We're all of us dreaming of the better days ahead, and a part of your bright new future could be a move to where the magic lives in the greater Orlando area of Florida. One of the biggest decisions you'll make when considering a move is selecting a realtor who can successfully match you with the right home in the right location at the right price. Victor Naraki is the realtor who can help you make the move you've always wanted to. Whether you're a first-time homeowner or looking to move near Disney World, Victor is in your corner. If you are looking for an experienced real estate agent covering all of Central Florida, please visit DisneyAtYourDoorstep.com today and find out just why you should work with Victor. I encourage you to create a free, no-obligation account on his website. By doing so, you'll unlock the website's full potential and be able to enter specific criteria, save listings, and browse new properties sent to your email. Visit DisneyAtYourDoorstep.com today or visit his Facebook page, Victor Naraki Realtor. And don't forget to tell him, The Solo Show sent you. Boarding! All aboard! Boarding! Sleeping cars are forward! Boarding! Oh, hi! How can I help you? Oh, you're looking for the solo show. You must be planning on visiting with Eric Cantor from Expedition Roasters and Hollywood Crawford from the Grand Circle Tour podcast. They're the ones joining Stan Solo on our expedition this week. Yep, you'll find the solo show just a little further down. It's on track six on your left. Thank you and hope you have a great adventure. Did you bring your passport for fun and adventure? Boarding, all aboard, boarding. Sleeping cars are forward, and here's your captain, Stan Solo. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Solo Show. I am Stan Solo, as always, and uh, I got a couple of treats for you guys, first of all. And a brand new guest. We'll go with the brand new guest first. Uh, Eric Cantor from Expedition Roasters. Uh, Welcome to the show, and how are you today, my friend? Very good. Thanks for having me on. Did I get your name right? You did. Oh, good. I got one right. Ken did a good job booking you. I got an <laughs> easy name today. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about uh, Expedition Roasters. What are you guys doing over there? Uh, we're a specialty uh, coffee company, a little mom and pop shop that does uh, theme coffees uh, based on either theme park attractions as well as other, you know, uh, pop culture uh, items. Mm-hmm. And it is excellent, excellent coffee. Uh, check it out. I'll put the, the uh, link to the website in the show notes. And in fact, I'm having some churro coffee right now it is really good <laughs> good choice i think it's red velvet <laughs> churro is that uh what it is? well the churro is is just a, a cinnamon churro we do have red velvet cinnamon. cake too but that is yeah. uh that's hook's revenge yeah maybe the, you mixed them oh okay i got the hook's revenge that's what i'm having okay so that's red velvet the, cake red yeah the red velvet okay that's what i'm having i can tell it's the red velvet okay <laughs> uh, also joining today's returning guest hollywood crawford from marvelous on main street holly how are you today and how are you? What's uh, going on with Marvelous on Main Street? Well, we have some new products coming out. I keep like I get new products and then I turn around and get more. Like it's so much fun designing all these Disney inspired jewelry. And they're such like large earrings, but they're really lightweight. So it they're really Instagrammable, which I think is everybody is loving. So we have some really new fun stuff coming out. Hopefully like the next week and a half, we have like Skyliner, Orange Bird, um, some really fun Mickey Mouse ones. So I'm really excited. I always love to see the reactions when they're first released. So every time stuff. I go on Instagram, there's somebody, either you or someone, one of your group of people that buy something showing off their no, it's so age. it's so incredible. Like that's what I'm saying. Like I had no idea, and every time I open my Instagram, I like you said, I have somebody that just bought it and they're doing a reel of opening the mail, trying mm-hmm. them on. I just got one right now. She's on um, Goofy Sky School right now at DCA, and she's wearing them and taking a photo. Like it's so cool. It's nice. so much fun. I'm so I'm so happy for you that it, that it's working out. Uh, but well, by the time this comes out, they'll probably be available for people that are true. Yeah, true. We're recording a little bit early. Uh, this 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 go around. Uh, we're here to talk about uh, 
Walt's Barn. And for those of you that don't know what Walt's Barn is, uh, Eric, can you kind of do a brief description or, or kind of tell people just very briefly the history of, of what we're talking about? Uh, yeah. Uh, back in uh, the early days when Walt uh, got his home in Holmby Hills in California there, um, he wanted to put a backyard railroad uh, right on steam engine in his uh, in his yard uh, and to house it and as well as build some of the uh, track and cars for it. He built this barn, which is actually very reminiscent of the barn from Marceline, uh, where he grew up. Uh, it's very similar to that type of style barn. And uh, it, yeah, it's where uh, it rests now in, um, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, yeah, and now you can actually go see it in- Griffith Park. Griffith Park. Yes, yes. It, in uh, Los Angeles. So now it's funny you say that it was uh, like a replica of the one in Marceline, because what I heard is that since then that barn has no longer exists, or the original one no longer exists. But I guess it is a tribute to Walt. They rebuilt a replica of the replica in Marceline. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's still two barns, but the original one in Marceline is no that. longer. Yeah, so the, I, that's what I had heard is that they made a, a, a replica of the original replica that Walt made a replica of. So <laughs> uh so it was yeah 1950 I believe is when was when Walt decided to uh make this barn. Uh so he didn't have any cows or chickens. Why why a barn? <laughs> uh, probably because of what, how he grew up, you know, uh just you know such fond memories and stuff and that's kind of you know, starts with that, with the barn and then the train and you can kind of see where that goes. Uh, well his original barn life. And Marceline, he did have animals, and I just learned that he used to dress them up in little circus outfits and do little circus shows for the neighbors and charge 10 cents. So we just learned about that. It's so funny. <laughs> I didn't know that before. So when Walt was little, he used to dress up the yes. cows and chickens. And, and... and his mom made him refund all the money because I guess it was such a terrible show. <laughs> yeah, she wasn't too happy about it. Yeah. And made him 10 cents back money. then would have been a lot. That would have been a lot of money back then. Yeah. For, yeah. To see a cow with a mane on it and pretend it's a lion. <laughs> or whatever I think it was saying. just small animals like um, oh. chickens and ducks. So okay. <laughs> kind of funny. Hamster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, so so he um, and his in, uh, what was his inspiration to um, to build these this rail? It's basically it was a miniature. Was it one eighth or one fifth size? One twelfth size? Like, I'm not even. Uh, it's I'm seven and a quarter inch. Yeah, so. Is the okay. scale. So yeah, in his backyard, uh, he must have a bigger backyard than you or I put together. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine yeah. what that property is going for now. <laughs> it, it's actually no longer there. It's actually the house next to it was also sold, and they combined both properties for even a larger. Huh, uh, they knocked both houses down and built a larger mansion on it. Oh uh, wow! Because it was a nice sized house and a pretty big sized yard, you know, especially yeah. uh, for the time. But yeah, that's even bigger now. Mm -hmm. So he, he built this railroad in his backyard and I'm hearing a lot of stories about when he built the railroad, kind of like, I guess Lily was more into flowers and he was more into the trains. <laughs> so was there any compromise made there? Yeah, he actually had a contract drawn up uh, by the studio lawyers for a right of way for the railroad to go underneath their flower beds to dig a tunnel <laughs> underneath. <laughs> yeah so so he lily wanted to be able to look out the window and see these her, her flower garden and of course walt wanted to have this train and he wanted to be able to go right around the whole house so he his his idea was we're going to build a tunnel underneath the the flower bed and walt being walt he wanted to plus it so he didn't want to just have a straight tunnel he wanted one that kind of had a curve in it so at one point you could not see the, the, the you know the light at the end of the tunnel on either end because it would you be in complete darkness so the contractor that was uh, working on it he said you know i could save you a couple hundred dollars by making this tunnel straight instead of having the curve in the tunnel <laughs> and, and walt's reply to him was if i wanted to save a couple hundred dollars I wouldn't be building a railroad in my backyard <laughs> just to, Very the, way true. To, the way the plans made so yeah so the uh so ward kimball who was one of the original nine old men and Ole Johnson, I guess they had railroads in their backyards or in their yards. 
Yeah. Who and are these people? Like, I want a railroad in my backyard. Like, this is so cool. <laughs> well, was, trains were very big in, in the 50s mm -hmm. and stuff. And, you know, in, in that time period. So, uh, yeah, it wasn't uncommon to have, you know, either like the small Lionel trains. I mean, not a lot of people had large ride on trains in yeah. the yard, but it wasn't uncommon as, you know, you might think nowadays. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. So fun. Uh, actually, there's a in the city I live in, there's a person that has a train very similar to what Walt had set up in their yard. And really? at Christmas, they open it up and they do train rides and they have Christmas lights all over and it's so free cool. to do. And uh, the money and uh, just a, a food donation to the food bank is what they charge. Oh, that's me. nice. Really yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So Ward Kimball, who people don't know, he's one of the original nine old men. So that was kind of like the birthplace of the or the beginning of the Imagineers uh, mm -hmm. was sort of because of this barn and their love of trains it was kind of how he needed help building the train so he reached out to these guys and these guys kind of helped him out and they were originally animated animators uh for the disney studios and because they were into trains they became good friends with with walt i guess uh lucky guys <clears throat> what's that i said lucky guys yeah now the now the train station or the train that walt built was bigger than either one they had he went <laughs> of a course scale, i got scale <laughs> <laughs> <in> size because <laughs> he wanted to be able to actually ride his trains i guess theirs were steam engines but they weren't rideable whereas uh -huh. one that walt had you could actually ride yeah always was it was just it was a smaller scale you, just, you still could ride on it but yeah Walt wants to make it a little bit more comfortable you know so you can actually comfortably sit in it and, and ride yeah yeah it, it would be like two people per car i'm guessing yeah you can fit two three maybe squish you know again Kids and stuff would uh, would come over and, you know, uh, also ride. So you can fit a bunch of them in the cars. So fun. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> and he uh, used to hand out little cards that would say the Carolwood Pacific Railroad that he would sign. And it was kind of your admission to ride. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, that's all, I, I think I'd rather have that card than go for a ride. <laughs> right? <laughs> Now, do I you have one, the but unfortunately, it's not signed. <laughs> oh, okay. I was going to ask. I wonder if they're around. They have to be around. They, they are. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Do you uh, do you know where the name Carlwood Pacific came from? Yep. Do tell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the street that he bought the house on was Carlwood Drive, and growing up uh, in Marceline and Kansas City was the Union Pacific Railroad, which his uncle had worked on, and he also had a. A uh, short job uh, stint on there selling uh, fruits and candy, which he ended up eating all the profits. So that didn't work too well <laughs> as a job. Uh, so decided to, you know, combine the, the names. Very okay. Cool. Did not. And know the other, that. well, there was also this the Central Pacific Railroad, which when they had the CP initials yeah. in a certain font, and he wanted to be able to use that font and that those initials. So he wanted something that was Carolwood Pacific. Oh. So when you look at the CP and all the things, it, it's the same font, but it doesn't mean. Uh, Central Pacific means Carlwood Pacific. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, an interesting thing to note, and I, I want to talk about this when we get into, uh, like, further on, when we get to where the barn ended up, other than being in his backyard, was he wanted the barn to look old. So he has is, is a natural curve to the roof of the barn oh. to make it look like it's sagging. <laughs> and, yeah, he wanted it to be to be like like it's an older barn and it was sagging. I guess the one in, in Marceline was like that, I'm, I'm assuming. So they, they made the the uh, rafters, each one a little bit smaller going to the center and then a little bit bigger coming out to create that sag. So That's interesting. Kinda, but, I mean, we don't get a whole lot of rain in California, so I guess it wouldn't really be too much of an issue with the rain, like, pooling on top. So... Well, it would still it would still naturally flow down. It's just it just has like a, a sag that's on the pretty, like on the that's peak. Funny. Yeah, yeah, and and kind of shows like that early. This is before Disneyland was made. That he's already thinking of theming. He's already thinking of details. Of how to yeah details the details of everything. Right. Which, which I thought was really cool. Uh, we're gonna take a quick short break, and uh, we'll be right back. It's unbelievable. I just read that the average woman thinks about only one thing every seven seconds. I know, but it's true. Now, I can't even look at the girls in the office. You know, men love the Grand Circle Tour podcast, too. But thinking about it every seven seconds? That's just not normal. Is it? The Grand Circle Tour podcast is your one-stop destination for all things Marvel, Star Wars, Disney, and Disney Destinations. And it has zero calories. The Grand Circle Tour podcast is available wherever you download your favorite podcast.
There you go. The Grand Circle Tour podcast. Check them out if you haven't checked them out already. Holly, that was a little bit seductive. I don't know. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty funny. That wasn't me. No, no. That was uh, our, our, our co-host Beatrice down at the Grand Circle Tour podcast along with Ken. Okay. So so the, the uh, have to, I guess, after Walt passed is when they decided they had to, or with, after Lily passed, when did they decide they had to get rid of this barn in the backyard to sell the property? Uh, yeah, I don't remember the exact uh, date, but it was after they were going to sell the property and, uh, and they wanted to save the barn because of the history and what it really meant to Walt. Uh, but they didn't have a place immediately to put it. So they had to take every board apart. They numbered everything and put it in storage for a little while. Yeah, and wow. it was important that they numbered everything, like like how I was talking about how the, the roof rafters, they weren't all the same. So they had to make sure they mm-hmm. numbered them so that when they put them back in together, they would be in the right order. So you still kept that same same slope in the middle. <clears throat> so I'm guessing at this point, the neighbors are so grateful that this tr- steam <laughs> engine in the backyard is going to be gone. <laughs> well, I don't track. know. If, they were, if he was giving rides to the neighbors and... I would yeah, be sad. It was only there for really two years. Yeah. yeah. Only I would be 50 sad. and 52, basically, because then he decided, well, he wants to make something bigger and, you know, thought, oh, I'll bring it to the studio. There's a spot across the street from the studio and, you know, on and on until we get into actually Disneyland. So mm-hmm. I think the neighbors are, thank goodness that thing is gone. <laughs> but you know what? Let's buy the property and make a bigger house so nobody could build another train there again. <laughs> <laughs> Is what I'm picturing in my in my in my mind. I, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, so so then so they have the barn in storage, and I, I guess it was Walt's uh, daughter was kind of the one that was spearheading, you know, saving saving all the memorabilia, all the items in, inside the barn, and um, like all the like he had what like eleven train switches set up. Uh, yeah, I mean there there are multiple switches and uh, you know side tracks and everything. Yeah, and... so they put everything into storage. Yeah. Now. Uh, Griffith Park, how did they end up getting it? Uh, well, the LA Live steamers were in Griffith Park, uh, and as they are to this day. And a lot of the track, uh, Walt actually donated after he, he took some of it down, you know, after the few years of it running the backyard and donated a bunch of the track uh, to them. So there was always that connection there with Griffith Park and the Live steamers, you know, already being there. Uh, so between Diane and then Michael Brogy. Uh, you know, they were able to uh, make a deal and be able to put it on the, the property there. Very nice. So that nice. is the um, like museum that is, well, however you're looking at it, behind or in front of the barn, correct? Correct. Yep. Okay. Okay. And that's where they have like, like a, I think they have a, like a car from San Francisco, like a train car, and they have all sorts of different steam engines there. Is that what am I way off base? Uh, the, the live stream is mainly the same type of, you know, uh, size trains and stuff like that, that it is open to the public too, usually on the weekends. Uh, they can go there, pay and take rides on those trains. Okay. So now, now the original engine isn't at Griffith Park, the one that Walt used. Uh, it's in, I think it's the Family Museum. Yes, it's in the Family Museum in San, in San Francisco, along with uh, most of the cars. There is one car at the barn. And then there are two actually in Walt Disney World uh, in the Carol Pacific Room that they have at the Wilderness Lodge there. Nice. Hmm. Now, now, there is an engine at the at the barn, but I think it. what I heard is that he purchased that one from a miniature shop in England and somehow it got damaged on the way to California. Yeah, and it never... the shipping container, you know, ever was, it wasn't air mailed or anything back then. It came over <laughs> on an actual, yeah. you know, ship and was damaged, yeah, beyond repair. Uh, so it never ran again, but yes, it's still uh, at the, the barn there. Yeah, so that's one that Walt owned, but was never ever used. So that's on display at the barn, so you can go see it. What other type of stuff do they have in the barn? Like we talked about that they packed everything up, put in storage, and now they're and now it's available for viewing at, at the at the uh, Walt Barn in Griffith Park. What other items are in there, Holly? Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff. What's <laughs> what's sad about it was there was a line, so you kind of feel a little bit rushed because it's kind of just like a walkthrough. But I really could have used a lot more time, not to mention I had my twins, but there was mm. like his hat, his shaving kit, the work benches that they said are all built by him. Um, lots of original souvenirs from Disneyland when it first opened. Um, 
Oh my gosh, I'm trying to think. Like the phone that was in the barn that they said, could you imagine the phone calls back and forth to the house? It was so he could call the house. Supper's and ready. Get, get, yeah, get, 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 exactly. Get your, get your five more, here. You have five more minutes or you're in big <laughs> trouble. Leave my flowers alone. Like I can't imagine the conversations on that phone. Um, oh my goodness. There was just. I don't know what else is there. The hat I thought was really cool. That's the so, uh, pork pork pie hat. Yeah. Yeah. So Kids, many different. Google it if you want to know what a pork pie hat looks like. <laughs> <laughs> so many photos. There was logs where he would log like how much he paid for things. That was quite interesting. Um, oh my goodness, what else was there? Eric, uh, the, the other well, the other thing that really impressed me too was the the workbenches. Mm hmm. Uh, there's uh, like so many workbenches in there, and the, the he Walt made those benches. They weren't he didn't purchase them or get someone no, else to make them. They weren't bought from Home head. Depot or anything. Yeah, they were yeah, actually exactly. you know, built from whatever lumber he had and stuff. And you have know, uh -huh. benches and stuff, so he could you know create uh, stuff for the railroad and uh, and build stuff there by hand. It was was kind of his area where he'd go after you know a long day at the studio to go kind of decompress and it was nice just to you know work with his hands and kind of you know have fun doing something besides and get away from the stress of the studio mm -hmm. yeah so i've never been there how many ashtrays do they have on display <laughs> <laughs> i did not see any but i could have missed it like i said it's kind of like rushed but <laughs> I, i'm i'm guessing there isn't any ashtrays but you know that there would have been ashtrays back in, in 1950 uh, oh yeah definitely definitely uh, uh, now it's the it's hours of operation are and that probably explains the lineups uh, that Holly experienced. You know what? Went. Honestly, it wasn't that busy, but I was trying to be not. You know, you you don't want to stay in there to where somebody else is stuck out there forever. So it really wasn't that bad. But right now, and I think this is just the normal hours. I was thinking maybe because of COVID, but it's they're only open eleven to three on the third Sunday of every month. So yeah, that's typical operation. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it, and and it's uh, completely free to visit. Mm -hmm. um, they free do parking, the free admission, and they have yeah. So they have a little gift shop. Obviously, um, it's nice to purchase something there, so the money will go back into the barn. And um, yeah, they have little QR codes everywhere. They have buckets you can donate. So it's really nice because it's yeah. all run by donations. So I want to talk about the donation. So Eric, this is kind of where, where you come in. So you're a member of the, what is it, the Baltimore Barn Club or what is it it's called? The, uh, yeah, it's the Carrollwood Pacific Railroad uh, that, you know, the, it, if you go to carrollwood.com, that's the uh, the website for them. And anyone can sign up. You know, you don't have to be out there. You know, you don't have to volunteer. You know, it, it's great if you can, if you're in the area or just some people come from all over the, uh, the world, from England and stuff, mm -hmm. and they'll come down there and volunteer their time, like, you know, on their trip out here. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's a small, it's usually around, I think it's about $25 a year to join. Uh, oh, you get wow. a membership card and, uh, you know, all uh, online calendars and uh, the first uh, dibs to the events that they do throughout the year. Because it is open, like I said, the third Sunday uh, to the public. But there are other times of the uh, of the year and different things that they do, like barbecues and stuff. And they have. Yeah, I was just going to say, I saw yeah. one that they're doing, I think, a barbecue in July. And I was like, well, that would be fun. I click and of course, it was sold out. So, yeah, because it is open to anyone. You don't have to be a member. Uh, but of course, members, you know, know first uh, what's That's going good. on there. Yeah. So $25 that's, that's a awesome. year. That is. Now you, now you were talking about you, you uh, once upon a time, uh, Exhibition Roasters had did a, a special blend. Which reminds me, how's that solo brew coming? The stand solo brew. <laughs> <laughs> We're still working on it. We want to make sure, you know, it, it's, it's perfect. Yeah. But yeah, we did uh, a few years ago. It's probably closer to five years now. Uh, we did a roundhouse roast. And we figured what, you know, better way to uh, donate to, because we donate money from all our bags. But for that one, uh, to different charities. But for that one, we decided to donate a portion of the profits uh, to the Carrollwood Foundation there to uh, help keep it going. Very nice. That's, that's so awesome. That is so great that you're that you do that. Uh, now, you you see they sometimes do events in Florida as well. Yeah, uh, you know one of the big things is that you know they when you join up they don't like to have meetings. Uh, that, that was Roger Brogy's big thing. We're not going to have meetings, and you know yes, it's run by a board and stuff like that, but they're not going to be boring meetings. So they have what they call an unmeeting and. <laughs> 
that takes an place. <laughs> yes, that takes place usually around uh, the first weekend in October. It has, of course, changed now because of COVID. It didn't run for a year or two, and mm-hmm. I think it is off schedule a little bit. I think it might be September this year. Uh, but that takes place in Disney World, and uh, of course, there's events you know going uh, behind the scenes to see the the trains and steam up. Uh, they also have, you know, usually guest speakers uh, and different things going on throughout the weekend. And that's open for, for members. Yeah. I mean, or... you know, again, if uh, you can get in also, if you're not a member, uh, but usually it fills up pretty quick as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So members would. would but I mean, first. $25, just be a member, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And like I said, you get a nice card, you get, you know, a whole mm-hmm. brochure and everything with it uh, and, you know, opportunity to purchase other items that, you know, help fund the foundation they've done uh you know replica trains uh they've actually had a casting of the bell from the original engine from the lily bell uh oh, wow. that they did a recasting of it and sold that you know in uh you know limited amounts and stuff like that so there's all oh, neat cool. little things that they always have you know available besides the little souvenir stuff at the barn itself so you that have sounds- a lot of things behind you obviously we can't see them but you have like um, a little flag, a uh, Disneyland railroad sign. You have some trains. What's your favorite thing that's behind you that came from the barn? Uh, well, it came from at least, you know, the uh, either the studio where it was manufactured or from, you know, or from the barn itself. Uh, I was able to pick up years ago uh, an actual wheel from one of the, uh, the, the train cars uh, from the railroad that was, uh, it's cast. It hasn't been polished or anything, so it's just the raw casting of it. Um, and then Walt used to, uh, you know, when he used to take his uh, vacations and whatnot, he would bring a, you know, a whole box of them and just <laughs> sit there and polish them up and stuff like that and getting them uh, ready. Wow. And, uh, yeah. But that's, that's probably cool. the most interesting thing and the coolest thing I've, I've found besides, you know, stuff you can get. Uh, there's a great book called uh, Walt Disney's uh, Railroad Story, which is by Michael Brogy. And okay. that's a great book to pick up if you want to learn about Walt, the early days, and his history and love of, of trains. Nice. And that's available through the website? through the. They had it through the website there. I mean, it was available on Amazon as well. Oh, There's okay. been multiple you know, reprints of it. So mm-hmm. sometimes it's available, sometimes it's not. Uh, you, know, yeah. you can still find it on eBay, I'm sure, though they do go for you know, uh, quite a bit of money for the, the first editions. Oh, yeah. I bet. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that they had uh, from, like, like I said, I've never been, but I was watching uh, YouTube videos of it. The, uh, I guess it was a mine train through nature's wonderland, which was an original retraction or a very early attraction for Disneyland. And they have like a, a model replica of it. Uh, yeah. It's part. pretty big too, the replica. And it's fun too, because they have the little trains like actually going on it. So it's a working model, which is really cute. I, so I never even heard of this attraction before. Uh, we, like watching the videos about Walt's barn, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like like Big Thunder Railroad, but it's a slower ride, right? Right. Yeah. That that's what it looks like. It looks like Big Thunder, um, but then, like you said, it's a slower ride with like a lot of animals, animatronics. Um, but yeah, it's super yeah. cute. And it, it used to kind of intertwine with the stagecoach and the mule rides mm-hmm. they had. It was all part of kind of the same thing that would crisscross over each other. Um, yeah, and they're actually restoring one of the original cars from that there, uh, as well as they have on property, which you can see also the combine car, which was one of the original uh, cars, uh, red train cars at Disneyland that was mm-hmm. originally, uh, you know, built for it. So they do so as a member there as well. Do they send you like um, newsletters every quarter or something to tell you everything that they're doing? Uh, yeah, I mean there are okay. emails you get. Uh, there okay. is typically a quarter quarterly newsletter as well uh and if there's any special events we get emails as well and like i said when you join you can log in there's a special member only section of the website and you can see uh you know stuff for sale uh the souvenirs and stuff like that as well as any of the events to sign up for yeah because you seem really up to date on all of this stuff so i'm like okay he's got to be getting (laughs) (laughs) some good information somewhere so very cool yeah uh, so now this is in Griffith Park, which of course, for people that are fans of Waltz, they, they know the kind of the history of Griffith Park. But for people that don't, uh, what's the significance with uh, 
Griffith Park and the Walt Disney Company, and in particular Disneyland. Nothing. Who wants to take that one? Nothing? <laughs> like a, a corn dog stand? I don't know. And, and some kind of carousel, I heard. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, there's some people listening that might, that might be might not be familiar with this story. So I, I think it's it's good to to let. Yeah. So know. there is a merry-go-round. I I don't have the dates. I think it's 19. 19- 23 1932 do you know the date no, oh fam. i just okay so um yeah a merry-go-round and it has i know it has 68 horses and they're very much in need of restoration but i know that they've slowly tried to work on them but it's very very pricey but this merry-go-round is famous because that's where walt sat on the famous green bench and thought wow, there has to be a better way where families can enjoy this together. Although I will say I rode the merry-go-round a few weeks ago with my daughter. So he could have hopped on there with her, but then again, (laughs) we wouldn't have. (laughs) Yeah, but then we wouldn't have Disneyland. So, (laughs) (laughs) but yeah, so right now, I don't know who knows how much it was to ride it back then, but currently it's $2.00. And man, is it a long ride. I'm used to Disneyland where it's like 15 <laughs> seconds and it's okay, next. This okay, is you like think it's going to end and it's like, wow, it's still going. <laughs> yes, like three songs. I'm like, and it is so fast. And honestly, I thought I was going to get sick. But I feel like maybe because it went faster, it didn't make me sick. I have no idea. But it went fast. Um, so... My Did other you not see it going beforehand that, that you could tell what the speed was or you didn't? Yeah, and it was so fast. In okay. fact, my husband was trying to record us and he had to do it in like the slow mode because he couldn't like record it because it was so fast. <laughs> <laughs> but my son who's six was like, nope, I'm not going on that. He wanted nothing to do with it because he saw how fast it went and the horses were a little bit scary. So... <laughs> So that's probably why Walt didn't want to go on it because it went too fast. He wanted to make an attraction like a park where they had Maybe. slower rides. <laughs> that's true. Oh, that's too so funny. funny. Uh, is there any anything else we wanted to hit on or talk about uh, with the barn or, or the park or Walt in particular? I just wanted to mention the volunteers. So yeah, I was please. only there for a couple hours and obviously they're all volunteers. I don't know how many hours they work prior to the one day that they're opened, how often they have to go to keep things in order. But everybody was so nice, so grateful to have guests there, asked us to come back. I mean, you would think that we were paying to go to this, but they, you ask them a question, they knew the answer, didn't want to stop talking about it. So I just think the volunteers were so incredible and you can tell that this is really something that they're passionate about. That's good to hear. Mm -hmm. How about you, Eric? Anything? Uh, No, like I said, definitely. If you ever have the opportunity and you're out in California, if you don't happen to live in the area, definitely, you know, try and make it schedule your trip for that third Sunday because it is Mm -hmm. only the once, once a month it's open, but it's definitely worth it, like I said, and the volunteers are amazing. They're, you know, they're very welcoming and friendly and so knowledgeable, will answer any question that you may have. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it's just a great thing. And then from there, besides seeing the barn and like I said, the uh, combine car that's there as well, you know, walk a couple of feet down and you can actually take a ride on one of the, uh, the live steam trains there. Yeah. So when I was there, it wasn't opened, reopened yet, but they said that they were opening the following weekend. So we would definitely like to go back and it's, I want to go with no kids, but I would like them to ride the train, but I just would like more time to really read every item in that barn because kids, every item has. You a, can ride the train and I expect you to sit in the car the rest of the day. <laughs> or maybe I could just um, pay for them to just stay on it for a while. <laughs> How, how far is it from from like let's say Disneyland or like driving? Well, what time are you going? <laughs> yeah, I know. So it is be, it? It, it, it could be three minutes, or it could be four and a half hours. I mean, yeah. you know, so it's in LA, or like I have no idea. Yeah, it's in LA. Okay, so LA, Orange County, it's a. A little well, bit I'll of be a going drive. if I'm going. It's going to be a Sunday for starters, so it's going to be like a Sunday at noon would be the, you know, that's yeah. Where I'd, yeah. I mean, I would say that yes, that is the best time, but you never know. You never know. Yeah, <laughs> LA traffic is a nightmare. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, Expedition Roasters, uh, you can 
find them. They have whole bean, they have uh, ground, they have uh, all sorts of different, not only Disney theme, but you have other, other themes too. Yeah, do you Harry not? Potter. Yeah. Yeah, we it don't have that one anymore. We're actually bringing oh, okay. it back, you know, in okay. here and there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we've got stuff, you know, Tiki inspired ones uh, by, you know, Jeff Granito has done some bags for us. Uh, we have some sci-fi, you know, 50 sci-fi, you know, inspired ones. So, yeah. Oh, that what's, beans, what's it called? Uh, beans from outer beans. space. Yeah. yeah that's and they have tea one. too. Um, tea and hot cocoa. And I've yet to have anything bad. Everything's amazing. So. Really well, thank you. Space. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, expeditionroasters.com is where you go to find that. And it's, I it? uh, can't remember now. What? Oh, Thunderstruck. We... Uh, oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> Craig's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so that's our newest one is Thunderstruck and it is highly caffeinated, non-flavored. So yeah, if you need that extra boost, that is the one for you. Yeah. I, I, uh, I really enjoyed that one as well. And it's a whole bean, whole bean coffee. So you yeah. get to get non-flavored, but great flavor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and smooth, <laughs> really smooth. Mm -hmm, exactly. And then we also have uh, Marvelous on Main Street with uh, with where Holly's selling her rings and earrings. Yep. Go. Are you gonna we're going to be out into anything else? Pins. I don't. It's so funny you ask that because Chris was just asking me that last night. Is there anything else you want to do? And I'm like, I don't know. We just started doing this, but my daughter said necklaces. Um, he did mention pins. I don't know. We'll see. One All step right. at a time. <laughs> I, I want to thank you. Thank you both uh, very much for coming on. Uh, this, I learned a lot. This was a, a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something I want to do now. I want to check out you know, Griffith Park and, and Walt's Barn for sure. And uh, to be honest with you, what was it, a month ago? I never even heard of the place. Right. And now <laughs> you hear about it everywhere. <laughs> well, again, and now I'm, I'm, I'm watching YouTube videos about it and all that. It, it is very, very yeah. fascinating. It's yeah. Definitely a wonderful piece of history. Like I said, definitely check it out when you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Agreed. absolutely. Well, thank you both for coming on. And Ken, take it away. If you have a brilliant idea for a future edition of The Solo Show and would like to take your turn in the guest host's chair, then drop us an email at thesoloshow01 at gmail.com. Tell us your idea for the show, and we'll contact you about a date and a time for you to join us. If you would just like to keep the conversation going or have a comment about a previous show, then visit us on Facebook at The Solo Show. All logos, sounds, and songs that are made by and for Disney and its affiliates are owned solely by the Disney Corporation and are not, nor are they intended to be, the ownership of The Solo Show podcast. We hope you'll join us for the next adventure on The Solo Show. Thanks for listening, and bye for now. <laughs>